be able to go through and watch some of it on tape. I'm going to go through and talk about uh, what I have done uh, in terms of cover two. Some of it may uh, apply to you if you're looking at cover two. Some of it will not because of the style of cover two uh, that, I, that I've run. Uh, some of the techniques and coaching points for the, the secondary should be okay, but things with the linebackers may be uh, totally different than uh, anything that you guys have done or what you're trying to do at your school. Uh, if you have questions, again, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if there's something I'm talking about or saying that's unclear, um, or you want to know how, uh, you know, if, if you were doing it in a different scheme or system, you know, how I would do it, you know, feel free to ask, okay? Uh, but we'll go ahead and get started <clears throat> talking about uh, cover two. I uh, want to start with, with what is cover two. There's a lot of different uh, variations of cover two. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, different things that people call cover two. Uh, when I think of cover two, cover two is some variation of a 500 two deep zone coverage. Five underneath defenders, three linebackers, two corners, and two deep safeties. Again, there's a whole bunch of different variations, uh, but that's what I consider cover two. Uh, cover two uh, became popular as a response to short, quick pass and text used mostly by West Coast offenses. Uh, today, again, there are many variations of cover two, and, and we'll kind of just go through those briefly. All right. Uh, here are some variations of cover two. Ne these are, are, are things in my terminology, my language. Uh, again, some of it may uh, apply to you, and, and you guys may be doing it, some of it may not. A two read, uh, it, it's a soft cover two. When I, when I talk cover two, when I teach cover two, most of it's a hard jam rolled up corner trying to get a jam and reroute on number one. Uh, uh, or two read is more of a soft cover two. Corner may be uh, uh, pedaling or shuffling uh, and the safety doing the same and they're both pattern reading off of the release of number two. Okay, uh, That is one version of, of cover two. Uh, two seam. What is two seam? Two seam, again, a corner can roll up, try to get a jam and a reroute on the number one receiver, safety over the top, the difference is how you handle the vertical route of number two. In two seam, as I call it, if number two is vertical, an outside linebacker will be running with number two vertical. Corner in the flat, safety over the top, linebacker carrying uh, number two vertical. Okay, uh, Two buster and two cup, those are variations of cover two that mostly are uh, uh, done in the NFL. Again, they're pattern match stuff where things are done based on the release of certain receivers. Uh, what I have run and... and um, you know, it was really popular a few years ago. Uh, it, it's starting to taper off a little bit for, for different reasons because of uh, the spread offenses so much. But it's Tampa cover two. As some of you may know or, or not know what that means, Tampa two is a hard corner on the outside. Corner rolls up to tie to jam and reroute number one. Safety, uh, both safeties are in the deep halves. But it's the difference of what you do with your linebackers is what makes Tampa two in, in a normal traditional 500 two deep different. Okay, in cover two, there are three weaknesses, three soft spots in terms of coverage. It's the two void areas down the sidelines between the corners and the safeties, and it's down the middle of the field between your safeties and your linebackers. When you talk about running cover two, you have to decide how are you going to take care of uh, uh, and protect those void areas uh, within the coverage. Tampa two, the corners have to shrink the voids down the sidelines to help balls uh, be thrown high so the safeties can make plays, and the Mike linebacker protects you down the middle of the field to make balls thrown high so the safeties can make plays. Uh, and that's what I, what, what, what I have run. Two seam and some of the other ones, when you talk about those vertical areas, well, if an outside linebacker is running vertical with two, he's going to protect the, down the middle between the two safeties. So it's ver those are variations uh, that you can run or, or may have run uh, in the past or seen run somewhere. Okay, so when we talk about cover two variations, those are some basic ones. Again, just the, it starts the old traditional, just the, you know your 500 2D uh, sort of a deal. But these are some things that people do. When, in my talk, again, I'm going to talk mostly about the Tampa two stuff. Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll go through that a little bit. Okay, Tampa two or cover two in general theory, 2D five under zone coverage. Okay, two deep safeties, five under zone coverage. Cornerbacks are rolled up on the wide <coughs> receivers to try to get a jam and reroute. Safeties have the uh, half field coverage, and this is the main difference. The Mike linebacker has a middle run through. And I'm talking about he runs down the middle of the field once pass 
uh, shows to try to protect between the two safeties. Well, in cover two, you have, again, five underneath zones. You're vacating one of them with the Mike Backer, right? What do you got to do with your two outside backers? You've got to change their drops to be, to be able to take care and cover that, that short underneath zone where the mic is vacated. Typically, in, in a cover two, you've got your two curl players outside backer, you've got your middle backers and middle hook player. Again, where are you weak? You're weak down the middle of the field between the safe, two safeties. Here, we're running the middle backer down the middle. We've got to compensate with the two outside backers. They're not true curl droppers. They back pedal and they, they uh, adjust based on where the quarterback's looking. Okay, so that's how you cover the voids down the sideline, down the middle of the field. Okay, strengths of it, uh, of cover two, very good versus quick passing attacks. We talked about that. That's how cover two really became a popular coverage because of, of, of the short, quick passing attack from the West Coast offenses. The other thing that teams run cover two for, uh, it neutralizes dangerous receiving threats. If you've got a bad matchup with one of your guys against one of their cats, uh, and you're, you're going to need to give yourself some help. You're, need, you're going to need to roll up and jam and play a guy over the top at times to help yourself. can't always just sit out there and play man and play cover three. You're going to put yourself in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations uh, if you're not very talented. Now, you can't do it all the time. We'll go through the weaknesses, but it gives you a chance to do that. Uh, another strength is the outside run plays. It's not great versus the inside run plays, but the outside run plays where you're pushing the ball to the rolled-up corners, you, uh, you have a chance to uh, survive. Weaknesses of cover two, the downhill inside run game. When you talk about defending two backs uh, in a tight end type of formation, pro style offenses, the downhill run game with ISOs and things like that, you're short a defender. You got seven guys to defend eight gaps with two high safeties. You have a little issues. You got to do line games. Uh, you got to try to make the ball bounce to the outside if you're going to run cover two against a, a pro formation style offense. So that's obviously a weakness. How do you, uh, again, compensate for it? Move, move people, move D-line, try to make the ball bounce. We talked about this already. Another weakness in the throw game, vertical holes along the sideline and down the middle of the field is a weakness in cover two. The thing that you always hear guys talking about, well, roll up in cover two, how in the hell are they completing passes to the flat? Well, if you're going to get hurt somewhere in cover two, you better make it be to the flats, the short flat uh, zones. Okay, I would much rather have a corner shrinking the void down the sideline, break and react and make a tackle in the flat, than have a corner sitting here taking away the flat and they hit you down the sideline for a 20-25 yard play. And that's what will happen if you just sit your guy in the flat and take that away. Okay, so cover two, yes you get a jam and a reroute, but you're not necessarily defending and taking away flat routes. Okay, you're defending the sideline first and breaking back uh, on those routes into the, the flat. Okay, here's a look at it uh, alignment-wise. Uh, got some, some uh, things on here. It's a pro formation. Closed call, that's the directional call of how we'd set the front. Uh, we always set everything to the tight end. Corners are cloud players rolled up to the flat. Safeties are deep half. Um, and then we've got the linebacker you know, drops there. You've got a hook drop, a seam drop, and a middle drop for the Mike linebacker. But that just kind of gives you a picture um, about what it looks like. Got a, a, a six technique, what we call a six technique. We've got a guy head up on a tight end, defensive tackle in the three technique, a nose guard in the shade, and then a five technique, open side end. And then the, the uh, two deep shell by the safeties. Okay, if we were to play against slot, those are the alignments. Okay, again, the corner and the free safety are playing half the field. Sam walks out, Mike and Will slide over. Corner slides into to a, a, a two uh, LOS or uh, a D2 alignment, which means he's two by two off the outside shoulder of the tight end. And in the safety there, when, it, when you, you hear me say C7, C9, C8, it means he lines up in the C gap eight yards deep. Uh, when it, when as I'm going through this, uh, you know, when you hear me say things like that, guys, it's not necessarily something you need to do, but I think it's important as you're talking your defense uh, and your alignments to come up with uh, specific alignments that are easy for your kids to understand. That Mike and Will right there, they're lined up, you know what their alignments are? Stack A and stack B. Simple as that. You, you stack your ass in the A gap, you stack yourself in the B gap. You know, I, I, I have worked with a number of different people and heard a number of people talk uh, about their different alignments for their backers and their secondary, and they make this stuff complicated. 41, 42, 40, all this stuff. Hey, get your ass in the A gap, you get your ass in the B gap and play football. Okay? Uh, strong safety, get your ass in the C gap seven yards deep. Okay, if you can do that, it'll help your kids understand their alignments and simplify things for them. 
Okay, and you know, we talked about this a little bit, but you know, talking over two over defense is a, a three technique, a defensive tackle to the tight end, a six technique, a three technique, a uh, uh, nose guard that's in a shade on the center, and an open side defensive end. Uh, Will, uh, Mike, and Sam, their alignments will vary based on formation. Okay, do I have two receivers outside where I've got to walk out and cover down, or is my number two, you know, in the backfield where I'm in the box? Okay, strong curl, we cook in the middle run through. You know, for their past responsibilities. Okay, uh, in the secondary, uh, cloud technique. When, it, when you hear me say cloud technique, that means corners rolled up to the flat. He's going to get a jam and a reroute. He's going to be the primary support player on the run. Uh, and uh, that's what cloud technique means uh, for, for me. Against the pro formation, uh, he'll line in a squat. He's one by five on the outside uh, of a normal split wide receiver. Uh, we're going to get square everything we do with our corners when we talk about cover two. We run a lot of, of, of off man. If you were here earlier and saw somebody, we run some cover three. We align off with outside foot up, inside foot back. We want to move to a, a squat alignment where we've got a squared stance, inside foot to outside foot of that receiver. Okay, We're at four to five yards uh, off that receiver so we can execute that jam and reroute. But that's what I mean uh, there. Strong safety lines to the left right call. Uh, he lines up 2 by 12 off the core, the end man on the line of scrimmage in slot, VC9, C gap 9 yards deep, or C gap 7 yards deep. And again, if there's anything else you want me to, to talk about or clarify, guys, don't, don't hesitate to ask. I'm trying to make this as, as simple as I can and, and relate to what you guys may do. <clears throat> this is where we'll get into to, uh, the stuff with cover two, mostly with the corners. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about linebacker stuff, but I want to talk more about the corners. They're, they're very, very important in, in your success in cover two because they have to execute the jam and reroute. It's not always going to happen, but if it doesn't happen, they have to react the right way. First of all, move to a squared stance five yards deep with inside foot to outside foot of the receiver. Responsibilities. Number one priority for a corner and cover two. Never, ever, ever allow number one to get down the sideline untouched. Okay? Never, ever allow number one to get down the sideline and untouched. You've got two half field safety. You want to try to get that guy to release inside and funnel him to that deep half safety. Now, when you watch tape and if you're, you run cover two, you're going to know that doesn't always happen. That guy's going to get outside of you at times. Okay? If he does get outside of you, you've got to make him uh, release flat and work to get down that sideline. And then you can turn and, and uh, shrink the void. But number one priority, never let that guy get down the sideline without being rerouted. Okay? Versus pass. Work laterally in the direction of the receiver's release. Do not cross over. Okay? What do I mean by that? You can stand up for a second for me, Coach. Move laterally in the direction of the receiver's release. Never cross over. Okay? Coach is the, the receiver. I'm the, the corner. I'm lined up inside foot to outside foot. Okay? I'm keying the, the, the receiver. If you were here earlier, you heard me talk about man eyes and zone eyes. Okay, zone eyes is key in the quarterback, man eyes is key in the man. I'm not playing man to man, but I've got to key this guy if I want to get a jam and a reroute on this guy. I'm five yards off of him. If I'm looking in here first to here, he's going to be by me. So to get a jam and a reroute, I've got to key this guy and be able to react to his release. Okay? There's really three things that this guy can do. He can release inside, outside, or he can release, try to release vertical on, on what I call a China route. Okay? If he releases inside, I want to work laterally in the direction to his release. Okay? Notice I didn't cross over. I want to step and replace. Short, uh, quick step, step, replace, step, replace, step, replace. Stay in square. Okay? Not clicking the heels. A lot of guys in cover two, he goes inside first movement, they want to go right here. Cross over. Okay, they get themselves in a bad position because that guy double moves you, works back to the outside, you can't redirect. Okay, guy releases outside. I want to work laterally in the direction of, the, of his release. Again, not cross over. On the outside release, depending on how much room there is between him and the sideline, you may get him to do a side run and then flip back inside. Don't like it, but it happens more often than it does on the inside release. But, as a corner, work laterally without crossing over in the direction to the guy's release. Okay, yeah. Coach, you said that they're they're responsible for you know basically contain or force on the on the run. Yes. Where do they get their key for that? Same thing from that man. Okay. If that if it's a run, what do you think that guy is going to do? He's going to come out and try to block you. Okay. Now there are some other things that guys do, and I've done this plenty, but it negates uh, to me of what you're trying to get out of cover two. 
if the corner is a force, a support player, and, and again, there are a ton of teams that do this, they'll roll the corner up, but they'll do it with some more depth. I talk about being at four or five, okay? So I want to get that jam and reroute. If it's a run, I want to make that block happen fast so my deep half safety can trigger and get involved in the run. You always say, well, the guy's a deep half defender. How the hell is he going to get involved in the run? Well, he's going to play run if it's run because that guy's telling him it's run. If that guy blocks the corner, it's not a pass. So that safety can trigger and he can get involved in the run. Okay? What some teams do is they'll play the corners deeper at about seven. And what they're doing is they're playing with inside leverage instead of outside leverage. And what they're doing is they're keying the end man on the line of scrimmage. If you're a corners team and you're using the safeties involved in the run and the corners are deep or are responsible for play action pass, those safeties are down low, they're keying the end man on the line of scrimmage and they're getting involved in the run. Some teams that involve the corners inside, they play the safeties over the top, they play their corners inside, and they're keying the end man on the line of scrimmage just like the safety did in, in, in a quarters. Okay? He blocks, he's knifing inside to try to make the play. Okay? That's good, okay? but you're not going to get that jam and reroute on that wide receiver if you do that. So it's, it, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, you've got to figure out what you want to do out of it. Okay? Uh, and, and that stuff's all good. There's times I do that, I call it a slant technique. And when I say slant technique, that puts the corner in inside position. Their uh, outside foot to the inside foot of the receiver. Now that allows them to knife in and be uh, more aggressive on the run. So you can do either one based on what you're, you're trying to accomplish. Okay? Um, but I, most of what, you know, I'll, and I'll be completely honest with you guys, when we talk about cover two, for me, cover two is more of a third down pass defense than it is anything. Very rarely, uh, unless it's a really, really good throwing team and they like to throw on first down, am I going to you know, be running cover two? Uh, because we want to get those safeties involved in the run, whether it be with an eight-man front with some man free or cover three or, or getting both safeties involved. Uh, but on third down, uh, you know, when you want to get those uh, uh, guys uh, to roll up and, and reroute and you get those d linemen wide where they can rush the passer, that's more of what this type of cover two is for. If you want to be able to stop the run and cover two, by all means, yeah, you, you can do it, but you better get those corners lined up inside where they're knifing uh, or you're going to be short on the run game. When you, when you, when you watch, when we watch some of the tape later, you, you'll see it's mostly third down throw game stuff. A little bit of, of some run game, but mostly third down. Okay, again, yeah, here are the three types of releases that, that I talk about mostly in cover two with the corners. One is the outside release. Okay, call it a, a, a must fade release. Keep square and shuffle laterally outside and force the wide receiver flat. We want to try to get the guy to release inside and funnel to the safety, but I'm telling you guys, after years of doing it, it doesn't happen very often. Okay, if he wants to release wide and outside, that wide receiver will le re will release wide and outside which is fine, okay, as long as you force him wide and force that receiver flat before he can get up the field, you'll be okay, okay, force him as wide as possible. Now, here comes the, more, the most important thing. Post your outside arm and zone, turn back inside. Be sure to carry him with vision to the quarterback to shrink the void between you and the safety. Okay, Coach, stand up real quick for me. Okay, ball's in there to the left, all right. Got a deep half safety. This guy wants to release wide to the outside and get down the sideline. I'm going to work like hell, shuffling laterally to the side, in the direction of the release of the wide receiver. At one point, some point, I've got to make a decision when do I post and do I flip. Okay? A lot of guys have a tendency to do this. They, want, they think you're going to get a two hand jam on this wide out all the time. They run, they turn their shoulders, they turn their back, and they start to try to two hand jam the guy, and then they flip back inside. Well, they've lost any vision back inside. Number two, number three, come to flat quarterbacks, shoulders uh, turned, he throws the ball. Okay, I want to try to stay square. I'm going to one-hand jam. I'm going to post my outside arm. Okay, I'm going to flatten him and make him release wide to the outside. I'm going to post my outside arm and flip back inside. Okay, now I've got vision on the quarterback. I've got vision on any threats. Now I'm going to cross over, run, and carry this guy a little bit down the field so I can shrink the void between myself and that safety. Because if I jam and I sit right here in the flat, that safety's backpedaling, got a lot of grass between us, right? That safety's going to, that quarterback's going to be able to, to, to hit that in that void area. So we're going to, uh, to jam, we're going to flip inside, we'll post and flip, and we're going to carry down the sideline with vision back inside. Again, where do I want to get hurt in cover two? If I'm going to get hurt, I want to get hurt up here in the flat. I do not want to get hurt down the sideline, I do not want to get hurt down the middle of the field. Okay? So whatever type of cover two you do, whatever structure you have, those are the three areas you have to try to defend. 
down the sideline, down the middle of the field. How am I going to do it? I'm going to post, I'm going to flip, and I'm going to cross over run. When I get to that about the 12-yard area, now I'm going to start to choke it down. Long stride, short shuffle, I'm going to start to choke it down because now I've put myself in a position. If he wants to throw it down the sideline, I can now take off and make plays or make it a high throw for the safety. And now I'm also in position, if he wants to throw it to the flat, I can plant my field uh, foot and come back down. And if they, hey, if they make the catch, I can make an aggressive tackle and limit any yards after con or after the catch. Okay, that's how we play the outside release. Works laterally, shuffle laterally, post and flip zone, turn with vision back inside on any threats on a quarterback. Okay, what I'm looking for on that out cut and when do I plant and drive? Hey, that quarterback his shoulders turn and that front hand comes off. I'm going to plant and drive. Okay, I'm going to run through the outside leg or outside shoulder of that receiver or back that's in the flat. <coughs> and try to make an aggressive tackle after the catch. If I get a great break, I may get a, a breakup, okay? If the ball's thrown a little bit uh, uh, downfield, I may get a breakup. But at worst, it'll be a, a, a throw, a catch, and a physical tackle for no yards, but I protect it down the sideline. Okay, versus an inside release. Again, shuffle laterally, inside in the direction of the release of the wideout. We talk about inside release going no more than three steps. Okay, if the receiver continues inside, do not chase. He has rerouted himself. So if that receiver goes one, two, three, okay, there's no reason for me to continue to go inside with him. He's already rerouted to the backer. He's already rerouted to the safety. Okay, at that point, what do you do? Okay, from there, we hinge. I call it a hinge technique. We hinge at a 45-degree angle, working to get width and depth. Okay, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about one more time here. Okay, ball's in there. Inside foot to outside foot. Man eyes, vision on the receiver. He starts to release inside. Laterally shuffle in the direction of the, of the receiver's release. If he continues to go, I got one, two, three. Hey, he's rerouted himself at that point. Okay, now again, where's where's the weakness in cover two? It's on the sideline, right? I need to get back out and down that sideline in case there's any type of a threat. So at that point, now I'll throw my inside elbow to try to get my hips open. I'll depart at a 45 degree angle. I call it a hinge technique. I'm working to get width and depth back to the sideline with vision back inside to play any threats. This guy can release inside vertical and back out to the corner route and we've got to be able to protect against that. Uh, if I squeeze and I just sat, I can get out leverage or we can get beat back on the, on the sideline uh, between me and the safety. Okay, Outside release. Shuffle laterally, post and flip with vision back inside, shrink the void. Inside release, shuffle, hinge for width and depth at a 45 again to get back outside. I'm going to long stride, short shuffle with vision on the quarterback. What I'm looking for is, again, the shoulders to turn. The shoulders turn, I'll plant and I'll break back to the flat. If I'm getting hurt, that's where it'll be. It's not down the sideline where we give up big plays. Okay, Does that make sense? Coach, when you're hinging, you're hinging with your back to the sidelines, correct? Yes. Always hinging with vision back inside. One of the things you'll see young players do in cover two is they start to squeeze, they'll start to squeeze. First thing they do is they turn back this way, trying to find it. Okay? They lose vision on, on uh, things. You want to be able to zone turn. Always turn to the quarterback so you can see back inside. Coach? Yeah. After you rot himself, why wouldn't you just go straight back and get depth? On well, have a threat from we'll get two. we'll get depth because you don't know where your threat's coming from. Okay, we want to get depth, but we also want to get width back to the sideline. Okay, because if I squeeze inside, that guy goes inside. What happens a lot of times? A combination. You've got number two to the flat. One's going inside vertical and back out to the sideline. If I squeeze and I go straight back, I can get out flat to the sideline. They can throw the ball over the top of me. So it's width and depth as I work back to the sideline. Uh, because again, what are you trying to protect? You're trying to protect the sideline. If I'm going to do that, I need to get back to that area. Okay. So we talk about hinge technique, squeeze and hinge, working for uh, width and depth at a 45 degree angle. Corner must run with wheel routes. Okay. What does that mean? If number two, uh, if number one releases inside and vertical, number two comes to the flat and turns up down the sideline, the corner again will hinge and run with the wheel route, keeping everything inside and in front of them. Okay. Uh, be alert for opposite colors you squeeze and hinge. As I've talked about uh, pre-snap recognition as a corner, I line up, again, I don't give a shit what type of cover two you're running, whether it's this type of cover two or something else. If you're rolling up with the corners to jam and reroute in cover two, this stuff applies to all of it, okay? Uh, one more time, coach. Okay, as I line up as a corner, one of the first things I've got to recognize, how many threats do I have? Do I have one? Do I have two or do I have three? It tells me a lot, okay? I need to know that because if this guy releases inside, I'm squeezing him, I'm squeezing him. 
and I have a fast threat that comes starting to cross his face, I've got to get off. I've got to hinge, and I've got to get width and depth right now because this guy may be a threat down the sideline, right? What am I trying to protect? I'm trying to protect the sideline. That guy has already rerouted himself. I've got to hinge and, and work for width and depth. Now, if there's a tight split between number one and number two, where I've got a fast number two threat to the flat, I may not even get a reroute on this guy. Okay, I may hinge right on the snap. If it's a bunch formation, three guys in tight, we don't jam and reroute number one. We line up. First thing we do, we hinge on the snap for width and depth because I've got a fast uh, threat from number two or number three. Okay, so pre-snap recognition is important. Yes, I want to jam and reroute this guy, but if I've got fast threats or as I start to squeeze, I see opposite color jersey across my face, I need to hinge right now and get ready to protect the sideline on a wheel route. Okay? Okay, the third uh, thing there is, is what I call a China route. Uh, what it is, it's a five-yard hitch by number one and the corner route by number two. Okay, five-yard hitch by one, corner route by number two. So I get the outside release, I get the inside release, and I get the China release. Very rarely are you ever going to find a receiver trying to release vertically right through that corner in cover two, are you? That guy's going to try to go outside and around you, or he's going to try to go inside and around you. And the other one, he'll attack you, and then he'll sit at five, try to get you to sit, and get that corner out right in behind you. Okay? Natural reaction has to be hinge right now. Depart at a 45 with width and depth when that guy sits at five to help on that corner route, and then break back down on the China route, breaking through the outside leg and shoulder. Okay? So those are the three releases that you have to, to, to talk about. You have to work with your corners in cover two. If those three things break down, one of those three things break down, you're going to have problems in cover two, if you choose to run it. Any questions on the corners at all? Okay, It's important that, that we shuffle laterally, we squeeze and hinge, we post and flip, and we get our eyes back inside. Some guys will coach, some guys will coach when you zone turn, I, I, I hear it all the time, hey, what's number two doing? Is number two running to the flat jumping? Okay, I don't talk to our corners about reading routes at all uh, in cover two. Yes, we're reading number one to get that jam to reroute, but from there we're, we're reading the quarterback. If he's looking down the field, I'm going to continue to sink down that sideline. Okay? Once he turns his shoulders, now I'm going to plant and drive and come back and play the flat. But that's the way I teach it. Um, it's not a route reading cover two. Uh, it, it, it's more of a true zone uh, where we're going to defend areas of the field and we'll react to what the quarterback tells us to do. Okay, safety rules, and they're a lot easier. They can be as complicated or as easy as you want them to be. Uh, and over the years, I've gotten a little more complicated with, with the safeties as, as, as I've had guys in, in a certain system and, and understand the concepts. Okay, safety rules, a line 2 by 12 off the end man on the line of scrimmage. Work to a depth of 14 by the time the ball is snapped, okay? Why do I want them to be at 14 by the time the ball snaps? Some guys will have them at 12. I put them at 14. A couple reasons. All right. The more depth that the safety has, the more control he can come out on a snap. Or he can even flat foot it, stand in place for a little bit, pop his feet in place with more depth. The more depth he has, he's not going to feel stressed down the field from, from receivers. Okay. He can be more controlled in his back pedal as he's going to his, his deep half. The tighter he is, the faster he's going to have to get out of there, the more stress he may feel coming down the field as wide receivers uh, uh, try to threaten him vertically. All right. The next thing that happens, cover two obviously is not great versus the run, right? Because you, you've got the DB corners outside, you've got deep uh, half safeties. How do you get the safeties involved in the run? Okay. I get them back at depth. On a snap, I have them key uh, number one. So I'm right here, QB to one. Ball of snap, that number one's telling me what to do. Why do we have the corners up at four or five? Because that wideout's got to declare what he's going to do a lot faster. Okay? The deeper he is, the more time that wideout has to screw around, whether he's uh, uh, trying to release or he's going to stock block. The tighter you get that corner, the faster that receiver has to declare. The faster that receiver declares, the faster you can get that uh, safety involved in the run. Even from 14, okay, and, and, and from my experience, even at 14, if that guy is playing flat-footed, gets a great read where number one's blocking that corner, he can run the alley and make plays, you know, two or three yards from the line of scrimmage. And from cover two, that's pretty damn good, okay? 
So you see how it all ties together and why you know I do what I do. Uh, again, this may apply to you, it may not, uh, but if you run any cover too, I think it, it, it can help you. Okay. Uh, key number one, uh, uh, it actually should be quarterback to number one, but after you key number one, you'll go back to the quarterback. If number one shows uh, run by blocking the corner, safety will come up and support the alley. If number one shows pass, okay, by releasing inside or outside, trying to get around that uh, corner, we'll work to an aiming point and play the deep half with vision on the quarterback. Okay, uh, what I talk about uh, 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 to defend the field, cover two is a true zone. We want to defend the field. I give them landmarks on the field that they need to try to get to. For college, we talk about splitting the numbers and the hash, the college numbers and the hash. Where that'd be in high school, I have no idea, okay? But splitting the numbers and the hash in, in college. I call it, 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 you know, I give them a landmark, but I call it an aiming point, okay? They're going to start to work to a point. They may not get there because the quarterback may tell them something different, all right? So that terminology and that, that, that the communication is important. We talk aiming points instead of landmarks. Do we want to defend the field? Yes. Okay, this applies to cover three also. If you're a spot drop landmark cover three team at all with your, your underneath defenders, hey, give them landmarks where they have to get to to defend the field, but talk to them in terms of aiming points. Hey, here's your aiming point. This is where you start to work. But based on where the quarterback is looking and what he's telling you to do, you may not get to that spot. You may have to start to squeeze the inner part of your zone. Okay? So that's, that's how I talk and communicate. Hey, it, it's a landmark, yes. But I talk to him about being an aiming point instead of a landmark. So, uh, with the safety, he reads pass. His aiming point is halfway between the numbers and the hash. Okay, it's, it, it's decent width. Again, why can we do that? We have protection down the middle from the middle linebacker. Okay, some guys in college, their, their aiming point or landmark is two yards outside the hash. Okay, ours is a little bit wider because we have that middle protection. If you don't have it, they've got to be a little bit tighter. Okay, that's something you guys have to decide. Hey, in high school, what is my landmark or aiming point for my safeties? Where it's at, I don't know. Okay, safeties, uh, again, I'm key in number one versus an outside release by number one. The safety will work to his aiming point, and it'll get his eyes back on the quarterback. Talked about the quarter, corners reading the quarterback, right? Safeties are going to do the same thing. As I start to work to my, my, uh, my aiming point, if the quarterback's looking away, okay, that quarterback should not have time to look to that side of the field, so back to the middle and back to this side of the field, should he? Mm -hmm. If he does, it's not a problem with the coverage. It's a problem with your pass rush. All right? It's a problem with your pass rush. If he can look there, there, and over here, I don't give a damn what you're running. You've got problems. Okay? You've got problems. So we tell the, the safeties to read the vision of the quarterback and where he's looking. If the quarterback's looking there and I'm the safety over here, hey, I, there's no reason for me to continue to widen. I'm going to start to work back to the inner half of my zone. So if he goes there to the middle of the field, I can make plays down the middle of the field. Okay? You guys understand that? Again, it doesn't matter what you do. I think it can carry over to a lot of stuff. If I'm the right safety and I'm working to my landmark, okay, and the quarterback's looking there, I'm not going to continue to work for width. Okay? I'm going to start to backpedal weave to the inner part of my zone so I can help make plays down the middle of the field. All right? Now, what happens if the quarterback's looking at me? Well, then I will get to my aiming point, and I'll sit there and be able to play uh, the throws down the boundary or be able to react back down the middle of the field. But I've got to get to my area, so if he throws it down the sideline, I can get there knowing I've got the other safety squeezing to help me down the middle of the field. Uh, if, the, if number one does release outside, quarterback's looking your side, the safety could widen because of, of the threat of, of throwing it down the sideline. Quarterback is looking away, squeeze the inner half uh, most of your zone, the inner, innermost half of your zone. Okay, versus an inside release by number one, safety squares up and works straight back. If number one releases inside, not down the boundary, there's no reason for us to get wide, right? And again, you don't have to do all this shit with your safeties. I do it because we, we progress to it. If you just want to have them read the quarterback, okay, and have them start working to a landmark and read the quarterback, hey, that, there's nothing wrong with that. I've done that too. Make it simple for you guys. But again, I think the quarterback's reads where he's looking can tell those safeties a lot and, and where to go, and it can help you in your coverage. Okay, if number one eliminates himself by running a shallow crossing route, safety can squeeze to the outside shoulder of whoever number two, whether it be a, a wide out or, or, or a tight end. Okay, that's the secondary part of it, which again, I think if, if you're talking about cover two, wanting to run cover two, 
with a roll up, jam, and a wide out, those, those things will apply uh, to, to uh, any scheme. Okay, I'll go through these fairly quick. Uh, linebacker rules uh, because they are they are different. Uh, drop back progression for the, your hook, curl, and seam players. Those are your two outside linebackers, either hook, curl, or seam, based on the number of eligibles uh, they have to their side. Okay, what we tell our linebackers is read through the three step. Okay, don't go anywhere. Pop your feet in place through the three step. Why? You're going to read run pass. You got to recognize run pass. If it's a three step, it's going to allow you to plant and work straight inside out to the inside uh, hip of uh, of number one. Okay, so we're, we're popping our feet in place through three-step. If three-step uh, is gone, quarterback's gone beyond, on three-step, it's not a run, it's a pass, it's not a three-step, it's beyond. What we'll do is start to burst in a back pedal. We, and again, I, I won't even talk about this because this is like Chinese three, uh, and we're just trying to learn Chinese right here. Uh, you know, we'll back pedal, and again, we'll set and have vision on the quarterback. Just like we talk with the safeties, hey, if the quarterback's looking one way, we're going to start to cheat. If the quarterback's looking the other, we'll start to cheat. Okay, linebackers, outside linebackers, they'll backpedal. They don't open at a 45 and get set. They backpedal, again, to certain landmarks that you give them. Okay, with vision on the quarterback. Quarterback's looking there, what do they do? They start to cheat. Quarterback's looking there, they start to cheat. Why? Because the middle guy's out of there. Okay, he's out of there. Protection down the middle. Those guys cheat just like the safeties do. Okay, give them a landmark if you if you if you want to do that. Backpedal them to it just like you would a DB. Quarterback sets. He it's a five step drop. He sets. They set. Why do they set? Because they want to be able to break. They want to get the feet underneath them and break. It's a lot easier to break uh, with your feet underneath of you than it is from a backpedal. Get set when the quarterback sets and get ready to break left or right. Uh, but to do that, you have to use the term burst for depth. You read uh, uh, through the three-step, then burst for depth, set when the quarterback sets, uh, and then uh, play his eyes. Uh, <clears throat> so that we'll, we'll, we'll stop it there with the, the outside linebackers. And I won't even get, uh, get into much of this with you. Uh, the Mike linebacker is a middle run-through guy. Okay? It's the same thing. He reads through the run uh, three-step. He's popping his feet in place for run pass three-step. No three-step. He's going to open to the passing strength or the field. Ball's on the hash. He's opening to the field, and he's getting ready to run down the middle of the field uh, to help shrink the void between the two safeties. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that Mike Backer in terms of looking for routes, uh, flipping back to the other side to look for routes. <clears throat> hey, I'd open him up if, if you do it, open it up with vision on the quarterback. You've got the safeties, you've got the corners, you've got the outside linebackers, all vision on the quarterback. Safeties will cheat, corners will cheat, outside backers will cheat. Mike Backer will lean on the quarterback's eyes. If he's looking that way, he'll continue to run. If he's looking the other, he'll flip back across and look for uh, things on the other side based on where the quarterback's looking. So all of your uh, back seven is playing off of the quarterback. He's telling them everything to do. Okay, and again, this is more of a third down deal um, to me. A lot of teams will do this on first down, but uh, I like it on third down. Because, again, you get to jam and reroutes, you're protected in those void areas, you make them throw it shallow. If you execute this cover, coverage the right way, cover to the right way, most of your throws should be check downs or short passes underneath where you can rally and make the plays. Uh, who made this, this type of uh, coverage uh, popular? Tampa Bay. That's why it's called uh, Tampa 2. And Tony Dungy, the Indianapolis Colts, the Chicago Bears, uh, this is the type of cover 2 that they have run. Uh, and, again, most of it's uh, on uh, third down situations. Okay, now we'll watch some uh, tape there. <coughs> Any, anything else with that that you, you want me to go through? Okay. Uh, we didn't run a lot of cover two. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of plays here, uh, but we'll go we'll go through them and, and uh, try to go through them thoroughly. If you have questions at all, ask. Okay. And if you want me to go back through something, uh, I, I definitely will. Okay. The first ones here are, are just a few examples versus the run. Okay, one of the things that we try to do is disguise our intent. 
did a lot in this game in particular against Notre Dame because of the run game of dropping a safety into the box either on a zone blitz or cover three or man free. So you can see the, t the slight tilt that we had with the safeties. Trying to show a high safety, trying to show a down safety. And then we'll walk back out of it. Okay, right here. You talk about uh, being able to get a safety involved. The tighter he is, the faster that wideout has to declare. That's a run. He can get involved. See him trigger? He's reading one What right now. Quarterback to one. He's taking a peek at one. He sees one doing that. Hey, it's a run. I'm gone. I'm gone. Okay, over here. Okay, he's seeing one block. His vision goes back inside, flows away. He's going to start to work to, to, to be in pursuit. He is not going to go run the alley. He's not the cutback player. He's going to start to uh, in his last man pursuit angle. But this is a good look at it here. Corner will be outside. He now will force or contain the run. If it comes outside, safety will fill the alley. Okay, we're, we're not exactly right with our linebackers here uh, with their alignments. They adjust to the tight end motion. But uh, you can see they're, they're getting to their gaps. And, and, and this type of a defense, okay, uh, why, uh, what do you need personnel-wise? You need guys that can run uh, because uh, uh, of the pass rush that is needed and uh, what the linebackers are asked to do, okay? Here it is again. This is against a two-back offense. You know, we did a lot of weak side blitzes against Notre Dame. Uh, with the Sam and the safety coming off the open side, so we wanted to show that a lot, uh, and then we come out of it. We don't want to just line up back there with two high safeties all the time. We played a lot of press technique in this game also against Notre Dame. Okay, so you can see the corners are up there fairly tight showing press technique. That's another thing that you can do. Okay, again, we're coming out the slow and controlled. I don't mind this at all. He's got good depth, slow and controlled, read it, and then he'll trigger can get them involved. Okay, inside runs, they're going to stovepipe. They'll keep it inside and in front of them there. could be a two-on-one tackle if it popped down the middle of the field. Okay, this is what it looks like against a single width formation. Sam will walk out, Mike and Will, or stack A and stack B, they'll slide. We call this a D2, D gap, means two yards outside, two yards deep. We call this a C9 alignment. He's too deep in my opinion. Uh, it means he's lined up in the C gap, would be nine yards deep. Uh, so he should be a little bit tighter. Again, this is run, it comes to tight end, he'll contain. Tight end's blocking, here comes the safety. Everything is getting spilled to the outside. You're pretty good fits. <clears throat> spill, spill, over the top with the Mike linebacker, with the safety running the alley. It gives you a chance to survive, uh, in my opinion, uh, in cover two if you do that. Okay, here's a perimeter run. We said one of the things you're okay on is perimeter run. Here's 22 personnel, two backs, two tights. Strong uh, uh, power running game. What some teams will do if they've got a good receiver, Okay, is they'll line up in this formation, try to get to you to load the box with the safeties, go one on one with the outside. Okay, we'll load the box up, but every now and then we'll play some cover two uh, versus it. Now here's some cover two. <clears throat> Corner will contain it on the outside. Safety will run the alley. Everything will be spilled outside to the safety. Backside corner and working the cutoff blocks. Got to squeeze to play the D gap. He should have stayed inside that fullback right here, this outside linebacker. He's again talking about gap control. He's got a gap. He's got a gap. His gap is underneath that fullback right there. If he's underneath there, corners there, it's the safety's job to, 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 to fill there. But there's going to be a very, very small void. He hops out of his crease. It gives him a little bit of yardage right there. You're saying that the linebacker is supposed to come inside? Yes, we're spilling everything to the outside. 
He's, spo he's supposed to stay on the outside edge of the tight end and spill everything to the outside. You're, you're trying to defend eight gaps on the run with seven bodies. The only way you can do it, uh, again, is spill everything to the outside and run it, uh, hopefully have a Mike linebacker that can run over the top. Uh, everything inside out, have a corner container on the outside. You've got a safety fill in the void and a Mike uh, linebacker running inside out. If not, you're, you're, you're out of gaps. Again, that's why this is a, a good third down defense, not a, a, a first down run stopping defense. This is a pass defense. But if they run it, you have to have an answer and a way to defend it. Now, uh, here, here's, here's a way, uh, you know, we can, I, I believe this is the one here. We'll cancel some inside gaps in the run game. Okay, right here. If you're going to run this, if you're going to run cover two, period, in, in, in running situations, the best thing to do is, is to move inside and capital, cancel interior gaps and force the ball wide. Again, we started here with some disguise with a, 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 a safety and linebacker, and then we pop out. We, we did play, play press here against BYU. We're pressed. Makes that block to clear fast. We're canceling interior gaps inside to make the ball run outside. And you get that disruption. <clears throat> You see what that movement does for us, though. So here, creates confusion in the blocking schemes, ends up uh, getting a tackle for a loss or no gain. Okay, let's talk a little pass stuff with it. Again, some of these are going to be good clips, some of them will be bad clips. We just didn't have very many, and I wanted to make the tape for, uh, uh, for teaching purposes here. So the corner's going to hinge down here. Yes, because of tight uh, splits, right? One, two, and three. We've got fast, flat, fast threats to the flat. Corner should hinge on the snap. See him hinge on the snap. Okay, he's working for width and depth. Okay, why is that important? The width and the depth. Okay, what teams will do out of bunch? They'll run this guy to the flat. They'll run this guy on the corner. If he just gets a uh, depth, he'll get out flanked here. Get out flanked here. If he gets width and depth, or if he just gets width, he'll get us there. It's width and depth at a forty-five with vision on the quarterback. Okay, <clears throat> up at the top. Not very good technique. He's trying to release wide the outside. But he is trying to at least post and flip back inside. I'd like to see him work flatter to flatten that guy off more and make it harder for him to get down the sideline. But he is attempting to do what, what I want him to do in terms of posting and flipping back inside. So here's the hinge technique. There's the post and turn. Okay, now here's the middle linebacker. You've got the corner helping. You see the corner turning and running. You've got the corner turning and hinging. They're uh, protecting the voids on the sideline, void down the middle. Where we're not good here on this snap is this guy right here. Okay, quarterback sets. He's got to set. He's, he's got to start to squeeze to his eyes. He's got no threats out there. Start to squeeze. Same thing here with this guy. They've got to protect the interior inside here when that guy vacates. Now, again, that's why it's best in a third down defense because these short passes here, they catch, you tackle, you're done. Okay? You're out of it. Big deal. They got uh, uh, five yards. Coach, are you ever concerned with uh, the corner's relationship on one against the outside release of your corner? Like if they're ever getting back on top of them too much? Uh, not, not really. As long as the corners continue. You're talking about the corner being on top of yeah. the receiver too much? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, it's going to happen some. Uh, like here, he's on top of the guy, uh, which I don't really care. It's more about vision on the quarterback. Not big, big, what, what the corner's got to do when he gets to about 12 yards is he's got to start to choke his motor down. And as long as he does that, if we're in a full-speed sprint down the field, well, that's not good. But it's a crossover run until about 12 to 15, and then we'll start to uh, short shuffle and come under control. And, and then naturally the receiver, if he continues down the field, is going to go by him. Okay, here you see the linebacker here. He, he does okay, just okay in terms of getting depth. This linebacker gets no depth. Don't like that at all. But we talk about uh, bursting. You see him popping his feet through three-step. No three-step. No quick uh, uh, a pass out of shotgun. Burst for depth. Burst for depth in that back pedal. Quarterback sets, eye set. Quarterback sets, eye set. Okay? And I, I get to draw, I get ready to drive on his intentions. Here, 
This guy's uh, not bursting for much depth. He's drifting. Quarterback's eyes are away. He should set. He should start to squeeze. He should be there to uh, involve an attack a little bit faster too. But that's not a bad picture uh, of what I'm uh, what we're trying to get accomplished there. I have a question. Yes. If that back goes to the flat, uh -huh. how do you is that just a rally and run to it? Again, yeah. Where where are we going to give up routes into the flat? <coughs> this corner right here. Okay. He'll post. He'll flip side run. He'll start the short shuffle right about there. Okay. If that back releases to the flat, quarterback shoulders turn corner. Now is going to plant and drive to go make the play. If he catches the ball here four or five, we make the tackle. Hey, so be it. That, that's that's successful play in my uh, opinion. If you want to take those things away and eliminate them completely, you got to you got to play tight man to man coverage. Okay, but obviously we know there's strengths and weaknesses to that. The thing I want you to understand. Uh, as a football coach, you always want to think that you've got the perfect call, the perfect defense. Guys, there's not a perfect call, a perfect defense. I've never seen one yet. I've never seen any any call that's going to stop everything that they're doing. What you have to do as a coach is understand in your package what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses. Hey, if they get you in one of the weaknesses, don't panic. Don't change shit. Okay? Have enough calls in your package that you can go to. Uh, in certain situations to take things away. But don't start to alter your, your coverage and bastardize it because you think you're going to make something up that's going to stop every single thing that somebody can do. It just It's not going to happen, okay? And, and, and that's one thing that's, that's frustrating when I, when I see it happen. Understand that everything you do has a strength and a weakness and have a complement in terms of a coverage or, or front or defense uh, that can help you with that. Okay, here we show the tilt with the safeties. Get back out. Okay, <clears throat> here he's trying to lateral shuffle. Could probably go a little bit more, but he's making that guy release uh, pretty flat to get vertical. He'll zone turn back inside and carry the guy. Okay, down here at the bottom, we're getting an inside release. Squeeze, here comes opposite color jersey, crosses, getting ready to cross, right? Don't squeeze anymore. Plant outside leg. Plant and drive through the outside leg. Watch the quarterback. Vision's down the field. See his shoulders turn. His shoulders turn. That front hand comes off the ball. Right now, I better plant and I better drive. I better plant and drive. Shoulders turn. Hand comes off. Ball is committed to being thrown to the flat. Plant and drive. Middle linebacker starts to open. He's opening off the quarterback's vision here. Okay, we talk about reading through the three-step. One, two, three, settle. One, two, three, three-step. Now drive. Not too bad here. Okay, here we had a blitz uh, fake here. Okay, now watch the corner. Guy go, uh, uh, squeezes to a nasty split. Z in motion here. Okay, again, tight split between one and two. Is there any need to get a jam and reroute anymore? No, he's already funneled himself to the outside backer and deep pass safety. He'll now, he's squeezed, now he's going to start to hinge for width and depth. Okay, uh, the thing I don't like up here, we talk about our alignment being inside foot to outside foot. You can tell from the tape that guy's not lined up with inside foot to outside foot, is he? He's going to have problems getting that guy to release inside or flatten him off enough. He's trying to work laterally. He ends up zone turning. You can see what he tries to do. He, he tried to two-hand jam the guy, and the guy's outside the framework of his body. That has to become a one-hand jam on the outside so he can flip his hips. If he continues to do that, he'll lock his hips and not be able to get him open. Coach, on that Z there, if they widen that Z out, would you roll up your safety to take away that slant? No. No, again... <coughs> We don't bastardize the coverage because of splits. How are we going to stop the slant? Okay, Two things are going to have to happen. The corner is he's reading the release of number one. Again, we're looking at one. When the corner, wide out goes to run a slant, he's going to go three steps up the field. He's going to plant that outside foot aggressively. Triggers something to the corner. Slant. Okay, Every time you watch a receiver run a slant, he runs up the field, he plants off that outside foot aggressively and goes inside. At that point, the corner is, good, is still going to be square. 
He is going to chase down inside from the outside. We talk about here, reading through the three-step. If it's three-step, quarterback eyes, he's going to run laterally from the inside out, corner squeezing from the outside in, trying to sandwich the slant route. What's uh, one of the most hard, the most dangerous routes to defend, the hardest routes to stop and cover two with outside leverage is the slant by number one. Okay, It is a, a tough route to, to defend. Now, again, don't bastardize the coverage. Run different coverages. Run man-to-man. -man. Run cover three where the safety does drop in there, okay, off of that look. Uh, but I, you, you don't, don't have to bastardize the coverage um, uh, because of potential weakness. I called cover two. We called cover two for a reason. We want to, we want to try to keep it. But, again, understand the strength and the weakness. <coughs> okay, play action, he gets sucked up. Instead of back pedal, he should now cross over run, get some depth, get squared up, and set when the quarterback sets. Comes to Mike Backer uh, down the middle. Corner should continue to sink with eyes down the field. Continue to sink. We're not very good with our, our uh, uh, linebacker here. He's out of control. He's crossing over instead of working uh, laterally in a shuffle. He sets when the quarterback sets. We start to squeeze in a, in a, in a uh, lateral shuffle. Quarterback uh, throws the ball. He should be driving from the outside in. Should be a two-on-one tackle between the linebackers there. Corner here. Again, we talk about corners containing a cup and a ball. Everything wants to be through the outside thigh or outside shoulder. You know, we, we, you know uh, uh, some years have been really, really good at this coverage. The more you run, it's like anything else, the better you're going to get. We, we didn't run a lot of this. Uh, and, and going into this game, we had practiced cover two for a long time. We played Cal Poly before this game, which was the double slot option stuff. Shit, we weren't running cover two against that. So we, we didn't have a lot of practice at it. Right now the corners are off, and they'll roll up on the snap to a squared alignment. Okay, not not good here. I don't I don't like that. He's not playing with his feet. He's not trying to make this guy release a, around him one way or the other with his feet. He's just trying to two hand jam him. Okay, here uh, you can uh, look up here inside release squeeze and then hinge, squeeze and then hinge. I'd like to see him uh, uh, burst a little bit more with width and depth to keep that wheel route by the back inside in front of him. Okay, you can see what we did here. Again, you've got a void area between these two backers. One of the things we've done to, to, to help that is to call two drop. Two drop, drop somebody there. Offenses think they get that right there. Two drop, drops alignment in that void area. A really nice job right there. It gets in the window. Okay, here's two drop again. Dropping a guy out to, to uh, take the vacated uh, area by the Mike linebacker. Okay, here we're getting too wide in our linebacker drop. He should be going uh, straight back one yard outside the hash. He's too wide with his alignment. Then he's working for width instead of depth on, on uh, his back pedal. But here's the check down route. Uh, they uh, they could have had, but we have the drop guy. He takes it away. Okay, lateral shuffle, force him back inside. Lateral shuffle could keep going. I'd like to see him get a hand on that guy to slow him down. But then he'll flip inside and he'll carry. And you can see him start to choke it down. Both of them start to choke it down. Go from a crossover run to a slight shuffle. Okay, here's a, a, a blitz uh, look. <clears throat> Here we dropped again. Middle linebacker running down the middle. We dropped. Again, third down defense. We're, we're talking third and ten here. Make him throw this stuff here. 
the second one. Gotta balance up the pass rush a little better. Trying to get that drop in, dropping over the top of three, or is it just? He's trying to get midfield. Midfield. Uh, we game plan who we're going to drop at times. Uh, we'll game plan. Uh, you know, you saw against Utah, we dropped the end of the three-man side out of empty because that's the most dangerous threat. We wanted to take that away. So we'll, we'll game plan that uh, on who we want to drop. Is it a certain inside guy? Is it an end to a certain threat? Uh, do we want him to address a certain receiver? Uh, general rule, he he just worked midfield. Okay, here's a uh, blitz look. Pretty good look all around here. Okay, shuffle, 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 jam. We'd like to see him post a little bit more and then sink. Getting too wide with our drop here. So again, we, we want to back pedal. Okay, up here at the top, you'll watch this corner. You see what he does. You know, so, some coaches teach this. I don't necessarily teach it, but if it happens, we've, we've got to be able to adjust with it. Here, your center field turns. He gets his hips and shoulders turned instead of a zone turning back inside. He center field turns with his eyes back inside fast. Uh, you know, which you can do. Again, I, I don't teach that or, or uh, coach that to, to happen, uh, but uh, that's what happens. Some coaches do. Is your outside linebacker down here trying to keep that guy? He just misses him? Or is he okay, still? yeah. Well, he, he, is, he, is, he is wrong completely. In this type of cover, too, you're not working to, to jam and reroute number two receivers. Okay. Uh, what, what, he, what he needs to do, he, first of all, his alignment is too wide. His landmark is one yard outside the hash to his side. You can see how wide he is already. Okay. And now he, he's, he's working for more width and allowing that guy to get inside of him. By his alignment... Uh, he should be here on his landmark. He should be working to his landmark. That would put him inside of number two there. Just got a few more here. To want to look at the quarterback here, <clears throat> crossover weave. Now he squares up. Okay, nice job by the Mike linebacker. Talk about reading the quarterback. Watch the Mike backer here. Initially, he's, he's opening to speed uh, receivers here, but he's going off the quarterback. Quarterback, his vision over here. Watch him flip. All off the quarterback's vision right there. Nice job. Okay, uh, right here, he's working with the quarterback size. <clears throat> Probably still getting a little too much width. He should go straight back right here. Quarterback sets, he sets. He'd be in a great uh, shape there on that uh, uh, curl route, or hook route by two. Okay, you talk about uh, back pedal weaving with vision here. We'll look at the safety, start to work inside with the quarterback looking this way. So you can tell they, they've got their eyes on the quarterback by what's happening there. Mike linebacker and backside safety for sure are seeing that guy. Coach, is your, is your uh, outside backer on top? Is he weaving because the back sets that? Well, way? no, he's, he's he, this guy is weaving because he has to get some width. Okay, because the ball's on the hash, he has to get to his his, his aiming point. So he's going to cross over run to get some width. He should be going a little bit more at a forty-five and not quite so flat. But then he'll get into his back pedal and the quarterback sets. He needs to set. Now with the guy looking away, he can start to squeeze back laterally. So he's got more of an aiming point as opposed to... Being well, he's, he's got to get some width to defend his area initially. 
And again, he may not get to it based on what the quarterback does, but he's got to start to get there. And again, he's got to know where it's at. Can I do it in a backpedal or am I going to have to cross over run? Okay, quarterback shoulders have turned again. Jeff, two on one tackle. <clears throat> In body position that I don't like. Outside leg, not the inside leg. Just a, a couple drills on here. I don't have a lot of drills uh, on this, but this is how I teach the corners. Uh, first thing I do is put them in, in the fit position here uh, versus a must fade release. Working laterally, post the outside arm, zone turn back inside with vision on the quarterback. Okay, I don't like the way he finished. You'll see a little better here. Crossover, short shuffle. You see him start to shuffle there? He's going to work for, for depth, and then he's going to come under control as he, he keys the quarterback. But we're working laterally in the direction of the receiver's release, trying to stay square, post the outside arm. Okay, I want to take the, the inside elbow and throw it back to try to get my hips open. Vision back inside, crossover run, short shuffle. Okay, now we'll back them up. We're five yards off, do the same deal. Okay, we started them in this position right there. Okay. <clears throat> Shuffle, shuffle, post, flip, and then break back. I'm back here, someone's back here is the quarterback with their eyes down the field or shoulders turning. So he's either going to uh, uh, get underneath a, a route down the sideline based on the quarterback's intentions or plant and drive uh, based on the quarterback's intentions. As you can see the, the, the footwork that I'm, I'm trying to get. Lateral shuffle, post, flip. Crossover run to shrink the void, short shuffle, read the quarterback shoulder turn, he turns to the flat, plant and drive, and uh, go make the player or uh, tackle through the outside leg. There's a vertical one there. Nice job. Comes under control, quarterback's looking down the field, ball is thrown. He should be able to make plays anywhere on balls around that 20 to 22 yard area if he's doing it right. When he shuffles like that, he doesn't lose speed on a receiver? No, it doesn't matter. He, he needs to come under control. Okay, they got the safety over the top. He's not trying to stop that receiver or defend that receiver down the sideline. He's trying to cause a high throw. And it's all because of body position. He's not trying to stay on top of that guy. Uh, he's trying to shrink the void. And if he short shuffles in that 12 to 15 yard area, he can do one of two things. Make plays on yard, balls 20 to 22 and come back and make plays in the flat. Okay, now the inside release, get fit position, shuffle, and hinge, and right there, come under control. Squeeze and hinge, come under control. Squeeze and hinge. Then we'll back them up. Same thing off the quarterback read. Squeeze, hinge.